Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem of the day and today's problem is partition array for maximum sum and it is a medium level problem. So when you first read this particular problem, it might seem very difficult but it is not actually that much difficult. So it basically says that we have been given an array and we can partition the array into contiguous subarrays of length at most k. So basically we have to form subarrays out of these uh, out of this whole array and all of them should be contiguous that means no elements should be left in between and the size of any subarray can be at most k. Now after the partition each subarray all the values inside that subarray will change into the maximum value that the subarray has. So for example in this particular case the partition they have made is let me just uh, copy this. So this is the sample test case that they have used and the partitions that they have made is the first partition is this one, this one, the second one is this one and the third one is this one. So if you see that uh, if I make such partition what will happen is the first three elements will be 15, 15, 15, 9 will remain as it is and the last three elements will be 10, 10, 10. So you see the size of any partition is at max 3, 3 here, 3 here. All the elements inside each subarray have been converted into the maximum element that is inside that particular range that is 15 here and 10 here and now I have to find the sum of the whole array right. So 15, 15, 15 is 45 plus 9 plus 30. So 45 plus 30 is uh, I believe 70, 5 plus 9 is equal to 84 right. So this is uh, the final answer and this is the maximum value that you can obtain. So we just have to figure out what is the maximum value after doing an optimal partition this is our whole problem. So what we can do is we can try to solve this problem with DP and uh, a single dimensional DP would be enough for this particular case. So I will, I will be just having a DP of size n. So DP of i will be representing the best answer starting from position i. Right. So you see that the answer at each position. So for example, starting from this particular position, it is completely independent of this particular range. Right. No matter what I do here, the answer starting from here will never change. So that is why I can try to solve this problem with a single dimension dp. Right. So what will be the base case? When I reach the position n, if I consider zero based indexing, the elements will be from 0 to n minus 1. When I reach the position n, there are no elements left. In this particular case, I just have to return 0. So I am just going to write it. So base case is base case when n, when position or i is equal to n, answer is 0. Right. Now let me just write the uh, helper function so that it is easier for you to understand. So my helper will be receiving only one input that is i. Now let me first write the base case if i is equal to n. I just have to return 0. If dp of i is, is not equal to minus 1, it means it has already been computed. I am just going to return dp of i. Otherwise, now let us think what we can do. We know that we can make a subarray starting from the current position of at most size k. Right? And I also have to figure out what is the maximum value inside that particular subarray. So let me just first initialize this max with 0 and let me just uh, write a for loop. Let j be that ending point where my current subarray will end. So I am going to start from i, right? And what, will, what can be the maximum value of j? It should be less than i plus k. Let me just explain you why it is less than i plus k. So let's say this is my i, right? Now my k value is 2, right? So this is this will be i plus 1, uh, i plus 2, right? Starting from my current position, if my k value is 2, that means I can take at max 2 elements. So those 2 elements will be these ones, right? And i plus 2, that is the element at position i plus 2 should never be taken. Only i and i plus 1 will be taken. That is why I have a condition here that I can go at maximum less than i plus k, right? So this is what is meant by this particular for loop. So what do I have to do inside this particular for loop? First of all, I am going to update my max. So just a second. So max will be equal to maximum of max comma array of j, right? As, as I have updated my max, this max will be the maximum in the range i to j currently, right? So now 
my dp of i should be equals to maximum of dp of i comma what is the size of the current subarray remember i am trying to figure out the position where i can end my current subarray so j is the ending position and i is the starting position so what will be the number of elements those will be j minus i plus 1 Right, these will be the number of elements in my current subarray if j is the ending position and i is the starting position. I have to multiply it with max because maximum is the max element in this particular range and all the elements, other elements will be converted into this particular value plus dp of j plus 1 since my or maybe I can write it as helper of j plus 1. So what is happening is starting from my current position i, I want to figure out my best answer. So, I am just traversing the value of j through the possible positions of the ending point. I know I can end at i as well and at max I can go less than i plus k. So, that is i plus k minus 1. These are all the valid ending positions starting from i up to i plus k minus 1. For all of these ending positions, first of all, I will have to update my maximum value. So, this maximum will be the maximum in the range i to j. Now, once I decide to end at the current position, let us figure out what can be the answer if I start from i and end at j. So, first of all, I will have to figure out the size of the subarray that is j minus i plus 1 if the range is from i to j both inclusive. Now, maximum is the max element here. So, I am going to multiply the size with max. Now, since I am ending at j, I am going to also need the answer starting from position j plus 1. That is why I have called my helper at j plus 1. Now, my dp of i will be maximum dp of i and the new newly computed answer. Right, whatever of them is the max should be my dp of i. At the end, I can just return my dp of i and that should be the final solution. So, you see how simple this problem was and you can solve this with a single dimensional dp. Now, let me just show you my final code what I have done. So, you can ignore this particular for loop for now and what I have basically done is I have created a dp array of size n plus 1. So, I have initialized all the values with 0. Why 0? So, that dp of n is automatically 0, I do not have to set it separately. Right. So, dp of n is now 0. For all the other values, I am just going to update it anyways. Right. So, for all the positions from 0 to n minus 1, I am going to update it. Now, ignoring the for loop for now, let us just focus on the main logic. You can see I have initialized my maximum here and I just made a j for loop. So, that is exactly what I have done here. I have initialized my maximum with 0. I have made a j for loop. j should be starting from i and j should be less than minimum of i plus k comma n. So, I forgot to mention it here. But this is also a very important condition because sometimes i plus k may be beyond n and you do not want that, right. So, that is why I am just going to take the minimum of both of them. So, now what I do here is I am going to update my maximum as maximum of array of j comma max, right. Now, I am going to compute the answer for the current subarray that is size of the subarray multiplied by max plus dp of j plus 1 and update my dp of i as maximum of dp of i comma newly computed value. At the end, I can just return dp of 0 because uh, at position 0, all of my elements will be considered. Now, coming to this particular for loop, this for loop is in reverse order and the logic is very simple for that. You see, for any value of i, I am going to need a value which is present after i, right. So, this j is starting from i and is going up to uh, other uh, some value greater than i. So, that means this j plus 1 will always be greater than my current value of i. That means all the values that are present after the current i should be computed before computing the current i. That is why I have to make this reverse for loop here, right. So, this is the only thing that you need to think about while converting your memoized approach into an iterative approach, how the values are depending upon each other and set a for loop according to that. As you can see, the middle logic is exactly the same as I have written there, right. So, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct. So, you see this process of the discussions and this solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. That was the next video drops. Keep coding. Stay safe. Bye-bye.